Stand to your feet. Stand, stand, stand. All over this place. It's probably up on the... It's not, but that's okay. We got the word in front of us. All right. But those things which God before had shewed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer. In other words, what this word of God is telling us today, that even before, before the manifestation, that God had already shewed it. And, and i like for you to notice that he didn't shew it like a movie. He shewed it by the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, speak, speak. Come on, speak. Mm. Yes, indeed. We got to understand how to begin to see yeah. what God has said. Yeah. Oh, you got to look at your neighbor and say, who? <laughs> we got to see what God has said. Yeah. That Christ should suffer. Yes, Lord. And then the Bible goes on to say, he had so fulfilled. Somebody say, he already did it. He already did it. Said, it is done. It is done. And then that 19th verse says, repent ye therefore. And don't leave yourself out. I know you're thinking, but I did that. Oh, but the Lord is calling for a newness today. He said, repent ye therefore. And he said, in order to. Come on now, somebody been looking for some. Somebody been wanting some. The Lord said, repent ye in order to be converted. That's good. That your sins may be blotted out. Yeah. How many of you know they've been forgiven? Yeah. Oh, but the enemy want to continue to remind you yeah. of what you used to be. Yeah. Oh, but the God, my God, yeah. blotted out, yeah. totally erased, yeah. took the print out of the concrete, yeah. I want you really to get this. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Somebody say, I got to get in his presence. He shall send Jesus. And he shall send Jesus. And he shall send Jesus. Right in the midst of your circumstances. He shall send Jesus which before was preached unto you. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, this day. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're going to go on just a little further. There's a semicolon there. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution. Say, I got to get my stuff back. Of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all of his holy prophets. Since the world began. Somebody say amen. amen. And if you want a title or subject today, we're going to speak real briefly. What time is it? What time is it? Oh, we thank God today that it is time. Oh, it is time. And I just want to teach you just for a moment. And I'm going to just run right on because, as I said, you have seen the time. You've seen this season. You've seen it manifest right here before your eyes. But, oh, but the Lord is talking about time. When we think of time, generally, we are thinking of chronos. We are thinking about looking at our watch and declaring to somebody that it's noon time. We are declaring to somebody that it's time to go to work. It's time to get up. It's time to eat. It's time to sleep. But the time that the Holy Ghost is referring to this day is a kairos. A kairos. You got to understand there's a difference in the time as we see time and time as an opportune moment. An anointed and appointed moment. A season. And I ask you again, what time is it? And I'm telling you today that it's time. It's time for us to lay aside every weight. And the sin that would so easily beset us. It's time for us to lay aside excuses. God is saying today, no more excuses. It's time for us to give up the ways of the world and comparing what God has said and trying to make it fit within what the world is telling us is okay. Oh, but the Lord is saying that it's time to get back to holiness. God said to be ye holy. How many of you know God is calling us back to a time of holiness? Oh, you got to understand. Somebody want to 
be refreshed today. But they will not embrace purity. Somebody is tired today. How many of you know that? Refreshing. Just imagine if the Lord had allowed you to use a push mower out there on the acres that God blessed us with. And you had to push all day long in a 105 degree temperature. How many of you know you would be looking for some refreshing? You'd be looking for a cool drink of water. You'd be looking for some air conditioning. And I'm telling you, the Lord is calling us in this season. It is time for us to begin to seek the refreshing of the Lord. Oh, we've been in the midst of the church, but God wants us to rise up. It's time for us to become the church. God says no more hanging around. He says it's time for us to become who he called us to be. God is looking for an environment where he can bring forth supernatural signs, supernatural wonders. He did it right here in the midst of us, right here in Acts. Hallelujah, just regular Peter and John walking by on their way to church. Somebody say on their way to church. And they saw the lame man. Yeah. And they promised something to him. Yeah. How many of you know they spoke it first? Yeah. Oh, they had to have faith for it first. God's looking for somebody that's got faith to believe that just what Jesus said, just what Jesus promised, just what the word of God said, it shall be just as he said it. And Peter and John believed. Mm. <laughs> Come on, that's it. And they released. And I mean, if you know, because they believed, oh, then the man believed. Oh, you better understand God's waiting for you to step in, not step out, step in uh, to your anointing, step in to his promises. He has promised signs, and he promised wonders. And that's the season where we are. Oh, God is saying that it's time for us to wake up, people of God. Oh, it's time for us to know. Oh, oh, know who we serve. Know the power and anointing of the God that is in our life. The God that has called us, oh, to repent. The God that has called us to salvation. God says, God says this day, wake up, ye that sleep. Hallelujah. Wake up. Take a stand yes. in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Oh, God, is the word of God says that to repent, therefore, and you got to understand that you just got to understand that Peter is a preacher. And uh, but Peter wasn't always a courageous right. preacher. Or uh, somebody ought to be right here today yes. who is thinking, but that was Peter. Ah, uh, that's you, uh, a prophetess. That's you, apostle. Oh, but uh, I want to tell you something about Peter. Peter was the same one, the same one, hallelujah, ah, hallelujah, that failed to Jesus. When Jesus was in the fight of his life, awesome, on his way to Calvary. And one of the ones that had walked with him, one of the ones he had spoken into, one of his choice disciples, who had said, oh, Jesus, I'll go with you all the way. Oh, Jesus, I'm not the one. Oh, yeah, look at them, Jesus. They might mess up, but I'm going to go with you all the way. And then we see before the sun could go down, before the poor rooster could crow, two or three times, he had already denied Christ. Who? Who? See, somebody wonder why you can't get promoted because you still got a who? Somebody would you wonder why God won't trust you somewhere but you still got a who? Oh, but when the Lord, when you get it right, when there's no more shame in your game, when you are determined uh, to own Jesus Christ, wherever God let your feet tread.
said, wherever God bless you to walk, wherever God bless you to talk, you're going to give God some glory. Oh, they might slay me, but I will yet trust. I will yet testify. I will yet declare. Shut it down, Sister Barbara. And they said, well, 
hell, you know. Uh, we got most everything we need oh now. And the people in the wheelchair, well, they okay. They got air. <laughs> the people that's broke, uh-huh. they got a check. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, Pastor. Oh, that's good. That's good. But the Lord says, the Lord says they're limited. Yeah. And he said, I'm a God. I'm an unlimited God. I'm an unlimited God. And God is going to shake down. He's going to break down the stronghold. You better understand that's on our mindset, our reasoning, our understanding. God has seen his anointing that we can see and we can understand, that we can hear and hearing we will understand. Oh, that I am an unlimited God. I am the God of the impossible. I will do more than you can ever conceive in your heart or in your mind. The Lord says, I'm going to break that stronghold of lack of understanding. I'm going to shatter that stronghold of unbelief. I'm going to destroy all the world. So there will be no more unbelief. Oh, the, my Bible tells me that I serve a God of impossibility. And I believe that he will do the impossible. Anybody can do the possible. The Lord God Almighty is in the midst today so that we can believe for the impossible. So we can believe, so we can believe. See, you don't receive because you can't believe. You don't believe because you've been leaning to your own understanding. Oh, but the Lord says that this day I shall do the impossible right in the midst. You will believe. You will believe. You will believe. And then we see in the word of God how the people were amazed oh, when they saw the lame man leaping and skipping and jumping. I mean, if you know everybody, oh, that's lame is not crippled. Everybody that's lame, hallelujah, you can't hardly see the wound. But the Lord says that I'm raising up. I'm raising up a body. Uh, somebody said, look, oh, that could, might be me. But I'm raising up a body who will obey me, who will believe me, who will let go of the stronghold of unbelief and will not be scared, will understand that the healing is not on me. The healing is not on me. The healing is on the one who sent me. And he is a healer. He just needs somebody to believe. God for you today. Oh, I'm going to go on and shut this down. Oh, because I can preach a long time. Oh, but I'm not going to preach long today. Oh, because Jesus, hallelujah, is in the house. Hallelujah. And I know somebody this day oh, got a healing in their belly. Somebody this day always oh, receiving restitution right now. Oh, somebody got a bank account. But the Lord said, open another one. Show me 
your face. A lame man. He could have been healed. And kept sitting. Kept begging. Ah, uh, but he quit begging and start jumping up and shouting. He started doing something. He demonstrated. Ah, uh, you said I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna get up. Hallelujah. I'm gonna show God. I know I'm healed. God wants you to show him today. What time is it? What time is it? What time is your time? What time is it? Oh, I believe I can't get away from that. God needs his people to understand. It is your time. You got to stop doing what you were doing all last year. You got to do something different. You got to get up. You got to kick some out the way. You got to make something happen. God said it is your time. It is your time. Just as it was Jesus' time when he died on the cross. I had looked back. I had looked back. If that's somebody here. 